Here I'm going to look at proof by induction. The last type I've already looked at proof by induction using series and proof by induction where you're asked to see if something is divisible by another number. Here we're going to be do looking at inequalities. Okay, So a few things that are useful to know in this. Remember completing the square, how to do that, and also how to deal with abstract inequalities. If you're asked to prove that a squared plus b squared is greater than 2ab, Well, what you'd like to do is get them all over to the one side. So you subtract 2ab from both sides of this inequality, and you're left with a squared minus 2ab plus b squared is greater than 0. Well, how do we prove that that's greater than 0? Well, this is just a minus b ought to be squared. Well, anything by itself is a positive number, so therefore a minus b ought to be squared is always greater than 0, so therefore it's true of true for all values of a and b. And we're going to be using methods like that in some of the questions that I'm going to deal with next. So the first question is prove by induction that 2 to the power of n is greater than or equal to n squared. That is for all values of n that are greater than or equal to 4. And n is an element of natural numbers. Okay, so for this one we're going to start with the same method. Our first step is always to check for the lowest possible value of n. So in this case it's n is equal to 4. So when we test the left hand side here, 2 to the power of 4 is just equal to 16. That's what we get when we check the left hand side. Well on the right hand side, 4 squared is just 16. So 16 is greater than or equal to 16. Okay, so therefore, so therefore it's true for n equal to 4. And we've shown it's true for the lowest possible value of n. So our second step there is making the assumption that it's true for n equal to k. So therefore we have 2 to the power of k is greater than or equal to k squared. And we're going to use that assumption in our proof for n equal to k plus 1. So we know that 2 to the power of k is always greater than or equal to k squared. What we might do then is substitute one of those values in later on. So our next step is test or prove that it's true for n equal to k plus 1. So what that means is show that 2 to the power of k plus 1 here is always greater than or equal to k plus 1 squared. To explain the following we're just going to look at this case. If you have some number b which is greater than some number c and you've got some number a which is greater than some number b, a is greater than c because a is greater than all of them. We're going to use that fact here. I'm being asked to show that twice 2 to the power of k is greater than k squared plus 2k plus 1. But as I know that 2 to the power of k is greater than k squared, if I can show that twice k squared is greater than k squared plus 2k plus 1, well then it must be true for 2 to the power of k. So in this analogy here, a equals twice 2 to the power of k, b is just equal to twice k squared, and c is equal to k plus 1 squared. I know that a is greater than b from my assumption. If I can show that b is then greater than c, then overall a has to be greater than c as well. So that's what we're trying to look at here. So simply doing the rearranging, all I'm going to do is take this and bring it over to this side of the equation, which is subtracting the right-hand side, and we're left with 2k squared minus k squared, which is k squared, minus 2k minus 1, greater than 0. So I'm going to complete the square on this part of the quadratic. For more on that, see the video on that. So we take whatever's in front of k here, we half it and square it, then add and subtract that. That's going to be 1. So we add and subtract 1. This part is a perfect square, so k minus 1 ought to be squared, and this ends up being minus 2. k minus 1 ought to be squared, minus 2 is greater than or equal to 0. k minus 1 squared, bring the 2 over here, is always greater than or equal to 2. Well, that is always the case. It's always true for k being greater than 4, which is what we were uh, started with in the question. I'm now going to look at one other example of that. Look at 3 to the power of n always being greater than 2n bar n being greater than 1 and n being a natural number. 
So we're going to start with testing P2 because n has to be greater than 1. Well, in this case, 3 to the power squared equal to 9. That's my left hand side and my right hand side. 2 by 2 plus 1 is equal to 5. So 9 is greater than 5, therefore true for the first case. Proposition n is equal to 2. So as 3 to the power k is always greater than or equal to 2n plus 1. Now what we're going to do is test for p k plus 1. Well, if we're testing for n equal to k plus 1, we're testing to see whether 3 inside of 3 to the power of k plus 1 is greater than twice k plus 1. There's a mistake up here. That should be a k plus 1. What we do is just expand out the brackets here. And 3 times 3 to the k is greater than 2k plus 3. Uh, what I can do here is if I can swap my 3 to the power of k with 2k plus 1, because I know that 3 to the power of k is always greater than 2k plus 1. So if I can show below that this is true, i.e. 3 times 2 to the k plus 1 is always greater than 2k plus 3. If I can show that that's true, then it is definitely true for the case above. So if that just becomes 6k plus 3 greater than equal to 2k plus 3. Well, that is 6k always greater than 2k. Well, that is true for all values of k which are elements of the natural number. If it's true for n equal to k plus 1, based on the assumption that it was true for n equal to k, and it's true for the first case, therefore 3 to the power of n is greater than to twice n plus one. Okay, so there's two inequalities questions covered on pre-point induction. The last one to do is De Mavre's theorem.